I've wanted to do this run for a really long time. We did a Beedrill run and I meant to do Butterfree just after, but I forgot and got busy, so we're going to do it during the month of J-Rose, and I'm actually really excited. Butterfree is a Pokemon a lot of us have used, but not usually for very long. Butterfree is known as what some call a Jagan, coming from the early Fire Emblem games. Jagan was a character that is super strong early on, but becomes pretty useless by the end game, and that is completely true of Butterfree. Its base stats for a fully evolved Pokemon are terrible, but compared to things like Charmander, it's excellent. Its move pool is also pretty bad. In some ways even worse than Beedrills, however, it does get certain very specific good moves that I think are going to help it immensely. It starts with Confusion, a pretty decent move, and Butterfree does have base 80 special. Unlike Beedrill, it's probably going to breeze past Brock, however, it is still a Butterfree with pretty terrible defense, so we're going to battle all the bug catchers in Viridian Forest. I'm not really anticipating Butterfree being one of the best Pokemon, so this small time investment, about 2 minutes of in-game time, I think is going to pay off immensely by allowing Butterfree to have a much easier time against Brock and against the trainers on Route 3, as well as Mount Moon and beyond. Brock didn't actually go all that badly, thankfully. We are level 9, and we actually get a Confusion first turn. So, unsurprisingly, Confusion can't confuse. Now, I was worried I didn't heal, so I wouldn't have enough power points, but we confuse Onyx as well, and we actually win without taking any damage. For the record, Confusion only has a 10% chance of causing the status of its name. Is that how you say that? Regardless, it's the same chance as Ember getting a burn, or Ice Beam getting a freeze, and we got two of them. I mean, to be fair, we were using it a lot, but very, very good luck versus Brock. I'm not going to complain, and because we leveled up a little bit more, as I suspected, Route 2 wasn't so bad, and we actually had just enough power points to defeat the Pokemon in Mount Moon. Now, while Confusion was useful against Brock, it will not be good against Misty Starmie, which is Psychic-type. So we really only have the choice, of going to battle Rival 2 once we enter Cerulean City. As always, he leads with his Pidgeotto, and we don't have Sleep Powder quite yet, we're not outspeeding, so we get hit by Sand Attack, and then I just decide it's not worth it. So there are some trainers we can battle. Again, we're not going to be setting speed records with Butterfree, so this Swimmer should give us some useful experience points. I'm not actually going to battle the Goldeen trainer yet because Goldeen has Peck, and I'm going to try Rival 2 once again. Because we hit level 17, we now have Sleep Powder, and as long as we hit... Okay. Alright, I'm just going to reset, and we're going to try that again. But the strategy now, and to be honest, kind of going forward, when there's a Pokemon that's difficult... Alright, finally, we put it to sleep. We can simply just use Sleep Powder. In Generation 1, when you wake up, you can't attack. So, by using Sleep Powder we can essentially immobilize any Pokemon that is slower than us for the rest of the battle. There's only one problem. It's a 75% accurate move. So, it is kind of cheap, but there is a drawback. So against the Elite Four, it's not like we can just rely on Sleep Powder, but it will help us. And it's a big reason I think Butterfree is actually going to be good. Anyway, while I was talking about that, we destroyed Rival 2. And we can move on to Nugget Bridge. We are going to have to heal because we do only have one attacking move. And after we finish Nugget Bridge and then Route 24, we probably want to battle Misty so that we can battle Lieutenant Surge. But considering we are using a Butterfree, it's possible that we might have to battle Misty later. But we're already here, so I might as well try. As always, Misty leads with her trusty Staryu, and we're going to put it to sleep. X defend doesn't matter, and we get the 10% confusion chance. Doesn't matter. Three shot on Staryu. Starmie outspeeds, but we still do put it to sleep, which is good. Now, I actually make a mistake. I use confusion twice, thrice, 
And then I realize, oh, wait a minute. It goes for Bubble Beam. I put it to sleep. I should have used Super Sonic because although we can get critical hits, when Starmie wakes up, which it will, I'm actually going for Sleep Powder to put it right back to sleep. That is something you can do, but you can guess wrong. Thankfully, it hits itself in confusion not once, but twice. And that's a first try victory against Misty. I'm sorry. I know I sound like I'm coughing. I'm kind of trying to contain my laughter because I cannot believe that went as smoothly as it just did. That's incredible. Truly incredible. Butterfree, I might have underestimated it. I mean, okay, it didn't one-shot Machop right there, so maybe not. Like, Butterfree is good, don't get me wrong. But one thing we can really see it's going to struggle with are Psychic Pokemon. This Drowsy is giving us a really, really tough time. We might have to put it to sleep. Thankfully, we got that crit right there on 9 HP. In a way, Drowsy was tougher than Starmie. And unfortunately, it's not just Drowsy that's kind of tough. Even basic trainers, heck, even Pidgey. Confusion, because we're not Psychic type, even with base 80 special, it's not that powerful a move. And we don't get Psybeam to level 32. By then, we will probably already be at Celadon and have access to Psychic. So that is a bit of a problem. If only Butterfree got other moves, even something like Gust would kind of help. But no, in this game, it's just confusion or nothing. Literally nothing. There's nothing else Butterfree can use as a pure damaging move, at least not until we make it through Rock Tunnel. Hence, we do not get Body Slam for Rival 3 because we can't learn it, and we have to rely on Confusion, both the status and the move, and Sleep Strats. Let's see if it works. Just like in the last battle, he leads with Pidgeotto. Just like before, we put it to sleep. It goes for Quick Attack, that's fine. But I actually made a mistake. I've run out of Confusions. So we're probably going to have to reset this battle. Thankfully, there is an Aether right by Bill's house. So I often will use that at this point if I run out of power points. The reason is, and I'm just going to play this out, see how much supersonic damage does, but we've run out of confusion, so we're just going to reset. Why don't I just go to the Pokemon Center? People ask me that. The answer, I'll let you know after I defeat Rival 3. We put Pidgeot to sleep. Now we have 18 power points of confusion. We get a crit, we knock it out. I'm not going to put Raticate to sleep. We knock it out with two confusions. Now I'm going to try to use supersonic. Kadabra actually disables confusion, which is really annoying. Thankfully, disable... Oh, it doesn't. I thought it ran out, but obviously it just wasn't confused anymore. I misread. Now disable has run out, and thanks to some pretty clutch confusion luck, we knock out the Kadabra really quickly, and we're able to put Charmeleon to sleep. So with 47 HP, we've made it past rival three. That kind of rhymed. That wasn't intentional. So, j -Rose, why don't you go to the Pokemon Center? I'm not going to go now either. And that might be bad because we want to battle Lieutenant Surge, but good news. There is another Aether available here. And since Lieutenant Surge, you know, he's an electric type gym leader and we're a flying type. Yes, Butterfree is a flying type. I'm not really too concerned with having to battle these extra trainers. Butterfree can definitely use the experience points, but... This is an emergency max ether. Ooh, we almost lost to this Pikachu. Um, that's not a good sign that it took three hits. But yes, an emergency max ether that we can use. And maybe it was slower because I had to do that. But typically, we can dig out of the building where we get the bike voucher and head right back to Cerulean. But that's only if we don't heal in Vermilion. By the way, this would also be true if we whited out. We would white out to Cerulean, not to Vermilion. So, yeah, that's just something we do to save a little bit of time. And it would definitely save a lot of time if we could beat Lieutenant Surge right here, right now. I'm not optimistic. We're not particularly fast. Confusion isn't particularly good. We kind of just have to put Raichu to sleep and hope. I don't think this is going to happen. Okay, so Lieutenant Surge has Voltorb. We're going to use Sleep Powder. And we get a crit, so it's going to be a 2 with KO. We have all our power points. We put Pikachu to sleep, and it wakes up. That's okay. Raichu, X speed, we miss. Thundershock, we hit. That's good, but it wakes up turn one. Thunderbolt, okay. I don't know if I would have survived just one Thunderbolt, but 
Certainly, I need a little bit better luck than that. So this time around, oh, I forgot to use the Max Ether. And you can see now why it's so useful. We only have two power points left. Most Pokemon, this isn't a big deal because you have multiple moves you can use, but Butterfree literally only has one attacking move right now. Anyway, let's try again. All right, you already know Voltorb's coming out first. I don't put it to sleep. It goes for Screech, that's fine. But Sonic Boom takes off 20 HP. So that probably, oh, especially after that Thundershock. Now Thunderbolt's going to knock me out. And so will a critical hit Thundershock. So that's not good because that's only 80 base power. Let's try a third time. Third time's a charm. I get the confusion from confusion. And thankfully, Voltorb only goes for tackle. Pikachu then goes for Thunder Wave, which is pretty bad. With 60 HP, Raichu goes for Thunderbolt, and we actually survive on 7 HP. So it's dealing about 53 or so damage. Unfortunately, once again, it wakes up really, really quickly. So I think I'm just going to try one more time. Okay, we put Voltorb to sleep. Let's be safe. Confusion, confusion, it stayed asleep. Three hit KO. Pikachu we're going to put to sleep. Don't want Thunder Wave. Two hit KO. Okay, Raichu. X speed, we put it to sleep, it wakes up. Thunderbolt, okay, we're still good, 22 HP. It's asleep, it's asleep confusion, it's asleep confusion. Okay, that was good. I think sleep lasts between one and seven turns in generation one. But in case you think I was just relying on sleep strats, no, Butterfree's really good special is a huge reason this battle was possible. The fact that Thunderbolt doesn't want to KO automatically and we might have even survived a Thundershock, or we could have taken a Tackle from Voltorb. That's pretty huge. We had an actual margin of error, and I wasn't expecting that. So I'm going to say that, honestly, Butterfree is a lot better than I thought it would be right now. I mean, even with just one move and its fairly mediocre stats, Butterfree hasn't had too many issues. I mean, of course, it's had some issues, but not too many issues with the first three gym leaders, and of course, at this point, Butterfree is going to be getting some new moves that are going to help it immensely. There was one more trainer, the Pokemaniac with the Cubone and Slowpoke. I mean, the Cubone can't actually do anything to me, but it's Slowpoke I was really worried about. Its confusion, though, really didn't do all that much. And while I probably am going to have to heal after this to get my power points back, I actually think this went fairly well. And after I heal, I'll have more than enough power points and HP for the second Slowpoke. And I'm not really worried about the hikers because I'll outspeed. And if I have to, I can put them to sleep. So we're going to skip ahead to Celadon City. Now, normally we head to Rocket Game Corner, but this is one of the few times I am going to battle Erica first. We're a bug flying type. Grass moves, they're going to do next to nothing. And Butterfree can learn Mega Drain. That in Solar Beam are really the only other useful moves it can learn, and Solar Beam takes two turns and doesn't restore HP. So we're gonna go with Mega Drain. We have to get by the trainer with an Execute first, but I don't think Erica is actually gonna be that big a deal. All right, so Erica leads with her Victory Bell, level 29, so we're not overleveled. I miss with Sleep Powder, it misses with Poison Powder. Okay, I miss with Sleep Powder again, it misses with Poison Powder again. Okay, what a great start to this battle. Now I hit with Sleep Powder. In Generation 1, Sleep Powder can put Grass Pokemon to sleep. 3 hit KO due to the critical hit. Tangela I put to sleep. And now we have to go for Confusion. It's going to be a 5 hit KO. Tangela hits itself in Confusion, so it's only going to be a 4 hit KO. Not bad. And there's very little Vile Bloom can do, but I put it to sleep anyway. Might as well. Looking like a 4 hit KO. No, I was wrong. 3 hit KO, and with that, we have Mega Drain, and that should make Giovanni a heck of a lot easier. Alright, well Giovanni leads with Onyx, and we now have Mega Drain, and it one shots. And Rhyhorn, also one shot, we're at level 33, and so I can rely on Psybeam, it also has a chance to confuse, and Kangaskhan will hit itself in confusion. So that was a pretty easy victory. And now I got to decide where I want to go next, and we're going to go shopping. So the reason I didn't get Psychic right away, which I easily could have, it would have made Erica a little easier, is because with more money, which we get from beating Erica and the Rocket Hideout, we're able to buy more Calciums. In order to get Psychic, 
I would have to head to the Pokemart right away because you need the fresh water in order to give to the guard to get into Saffron City. Now, I had to decide whether it would be faster to make two trips or whether it'd be faster to just delay a little bit, and I think delaying is in fact faster. So that's what I ended up doing. Now that we have the fresh water, we're gonna go get the HM for Fly, we're gonna go to Saffron, we're gonna go to Mr. Psychic's house, and we're gonna get Psychic. I actually collected a couple PowerPoint ups because neither Psychic nor Mega Drain have tons of PowerPoints, so it's pretty good to get those. One of them is available in Celadon City. Another one is very easy to get in the first basement floor of the Rocket Hideout. So that'll give us 14 power points as opposed to 10. And that should come in handy against Rival 4. He leads with Pidgeotto the last time he leads with Pidgeotto. And we're going to go for Psychic. We get the special drop. 1 in 3 chance of that. But not knocking it out is kind of annoying. It goes for Gust. That's fine. So I can go for Mega Drain. And now I have 93 HP for Execute. I try to put it to sleep. It tries to put me to sleep. We both fail. I do put it to sleep the second time. It wakes up. I now put it to sleep on my third try. I get a special drop, so I don't need to put it back to sleep, and we knock it out. This is why Psychic is so overpowered. Gyarados, I just use Psychic. It goes for Hydro Pump. Does next to nothing. How does it even know Hydro Pump at level 22? Anyway, unfortunately, it's going to be a 3 KO. Thankfully, it misses with the second Hydro Pump, and we can use Mega Drain to get 70 HP. We're going to put Kadabra to sleep, and we're going to go for Psychic. It wakes up. I'm just going to use another Psychic. And it goes for Disable, so we can knock it out with Mega Drain. And I'm going to put Charmeleon to sleep. Psychic is going to be a 2 hit KO. And I go for Mega Drain. That was a mistake, but it's okay. We have 72 HP. We've beaten Rival 4. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, why do we even show the Rival 4 battle? It's so easy. But the truth is, usually Rival 4 is a really good battle to show the progression of our Pokemon and our moveset. Even though our Pokemon isn't going to evolve, its moveset basically evolves at this point. So we go from using just Confusion and Sleep Powder to having Mega Drain and Psychic. So it's not a massive change for Butterfree. Some of the other Pokemon it is, and it's just a really good, easy battle to show the transition from the early game to the mid game. So now we're in the mid game, and we gotta decide where to go next. And I think the decision is somewhat easy, Psychic is a Psychic move. Koga has Poison Pokemon. We are weak to Poison. This is Generation 1. We're a Bug type. But with Sleep Powder, I think we'll be fine, but it might take a couple tries. First things first, though, we need to defeat the Jugglers in Koga's Gym. Now, I could have gone Double Edge from the Rocket Hideout, but I opted to go for Psychic and Sleep Powder. I don't know what would be faster. Truth be told, I also didn't want to delete Supersonic just yet. Mega Drain also kind of works, but the thing with Psychic, although the juggler is switching out, is that you get that chance to lower Special. So that's why Psychic is a little bit better than it first seems. It's a weird overpowered version of the move Charge Beam. I guess it's not 90%, it's only 33%, but it's a Psychic move with base 90 power. So I would say it's far better than Charge Beam. And using that strategy, we are able to knock out all the Juggler's Pokemon. I will have to heal because I need enough Psychics to knock out Koga's Pokemon. But at least you could see it really wasn't that big a deal. They actually didn't attack us a single time. Okay, so Koga leads with Coughing. I'm just going to go for Psychic. It's a one-shot. Will Muck be a one-shot? No. And Sludge will knock me out. Okay. I could heal but I think I'm just going to put Muck and Weezing to sleep. Try that again. We go for Psychic. One at KO and Coughing. We go for Sleep Powder. We miss. X Attack is fine. We miss again. Okay. So that is bound to happen. Against Gym Leaders, it's not a big deal. Against the Elite Four, we have to prepare for that. But that's going to be in a while. We one-shot Coughing with Psychic. We don't put Muck to sleep. All right. This is getting kind of irritating. But it's okay. We've had some good luck. This is a pretty good spot to get some bad luck. Very quick, just to reset and try again. All right, we use Psychic. We knock out Coughing. Please work. Yay, all right. So it's gonna be a two KO, Muck stays asleep. Very good. We're easily gonna knock out Coughing number two. And, ooh, we put Weezing to sleep on our first try. And it's gonna be a two KO. 
Well, I think the crit didn't matter. I don't know. Anyway, that went just about as well as I thought it would. Took more attempts, sure. That's kind of the downside of using Sleep Powder. Now, this is one of the reasons that using real time would be advantageous, because obviously in in-game time, every time we reset, the clock resets. And this is why I try to go for consistency and usually have about the 20% rule. If a Pokemon can win a battle about 20% of the time, I think that's good enough. Butterfree should have won far earlier, to be quite honest with you. So I'm happy enough with that. And the reason we don't use real time is then I'd have to do these runs over and over again. And that would just be really boring and tedious. So that's not what I'm going to do. And it hasn't been what I've been doing for the last couple years. Anyway, now it's time to go battle rival Fievel. This battle, I'm not so sure how it's going to go. I think it might go quite poorly, but I don't want to battle Blaine, and we can't battle Sabrina until we defeat Rival Fievel. There isn't a lot of other options, but there is the Fighting Dojo if this goes badly. Let's see how it goes. Rival Fievel leads with Pidgeot. We go for Sleep Powder, and we actually outsped. We put Pidgeot to sleep on our second try. Psychic is going to be a 3 KO. Even if it lowers special, I don't think that matters. It stays asleep, and yes, it didn't matter, but I can gain a little bit of HP back with Mega Drain. Execute, I put it to sleep. I go for Psychic, it stays asleep. I go for Psychic, it wakes up, which I don't notice, and thankfully, Execute's attack misses. Then I put Execute back to sleep. I go for Psychic and get a crit, and that means Mega Drain, oh, we got a crit. That's why I didn't knock it out. But we have 95 HP for Gyarados. We put it to sleep. We go for Psychic, it wakes up right away, that's not good. Bite, 30 damage, not great. Put it back to sleep, stays asleep. We use Psychic, it's special drops. We can use Mega Drain now, we're at 76 HP, 87 HP, and thankfully it stayed asleep and we're at 90 HP for Alakazam. We don't outspeed, but it goes for Recover at full HP. We don't put it to sleep though. It goes for Disable, Psychic is disabled, and we miss Sleep again. Recover, okay, we put it to sleep. I go for Supersonic, it misses. Thankfully, Alakazam stays asleep. We miss again with Supersonic. Alakazam stays asleep. Finally, we hit with Supersonic. Alakazam wakes up, we go for Mega Drain, it does like nothing. It's confused, it hits itself in confusion, that's good. Psychic is still disabled. Finally, it's not disabled anymore, and I missed the message. So, I don't click it immediately. I realize, oh, it must not be disabled anymore. Too many terms has passed. Alakazam is awake though, hits itself in confusion. We try to put it back to sleep. We fail, so Alakazam can recover. We do put it back to sleep, but at this point, we don't have enough power points to get by Charizard. So while we level up, and we can put Charizard to sleep, it just knows Ember, doesn't do that much. We don't outspeed, but we do put it to sleep. Psychic, we get the special drop, it wakes up. We come so close, second special drop, but <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. And there's the, oh! <laughs> Okay, and we hit with supersonic. All right. Oh my god. No, it doesn't. All right. Wait No, <laughs> I thought we had it. I thought we had it. No oh God, that was so close. That was so dumb. All right. All right, so that was not a win obviously But I can make that a lot more consistent while there isn't a bed in the SSN there is one in self company we have to go through, well, not actually the scientist, just this Team Rocket member, but we should level up after defeating him. And by using the bed, we not only will get all our HP back, but we'll get all our power points back for Psychic. Because we defeated the Arbok, we have one less than we should, and that one extra Psychic would have allowed me to defeat Rival Fievel first try. Again, I don't think Butterfree is going to be winning any speed awards, so battling a few more extra trainers could be very helpful long term. Once you defeat Giovanni, all these trainers will disappear. So battling all the trainers in the immediate area just seems like a good idea. And after we do all that, we're going to head back and battle rival Fievel again. All right. So of course he's leading with Pidgeot. We're going to try to put it to sleep. And this time we outspeed, which is huge. Psychic, it's going to be a 3 KO still. I mean, maybe not if we got the special drop, which we didn't get, but that's okay. Execute comes out. We don't put it to sleep. This time it does poison us, which is annoying. It shouldn't be a big deal. We put it to sleep second turn. It stays asleep. We use Psychic. We get the special drop. That's good. We use Psychic again, and a third hit will knock out Execute. 
We're poisoned. We're at 96 HP, but that's about where we were at last time. We put Gyarados to sleep. That's good. We go for Psychic. No special drop. Another Psychic. No special drop. I go for Mega Drain. So we're at 76 HP. Now 84. Rival Fievel uses a potion, and I don't want Gyarados to attack me. So I'm just going to go for Psychic and knock it out. We're at 80 HP for Alakazam. It outspeeds, but misses with Disable, so we are able to put it to sleep. It's still asleep. I go for Psychic. No special drop. It's still asleep. I go for Supersonic. It's still asleep. I go for Supersonic and hit. It's still asleep. I go for Psychic. Still no special drop, and I don't think this is going to work. We don't have enough power points. It's still asleep. We get a crit, but still no special drop. We only have two power points left. We have very little HP. Alakazam wakes up. Potion is not good. Now it goes for recover, and although it hits itself in confusion, at this point it feels a little too late, and it was. It knocks me out with Psybeam. That's okay, we didn't have enough Psychics for Charizard anyway. You can see now why I leveled up a bit more. I knew this battle wasn't going to be consistent. We do put Pidgeot to sleep again. We don't get a special drop, so it's going to be a 3 kill with Psychic. Maybe I should have swapped to Mega Drain, but that's okay. We do put Execute asleep right away. No poison this time. We get the special drop. It does wake up. We put it right back to sleep. We get a crit, which is fine. And then we can use Mega Drain. It wakes up, but like we said, can't attack. So we knock it out with Mega Drain. Gyarados, we put it to sleep. We go for Psychic, no special drop. We go for Psychic again. We get the special drop, but Gyarados wakes up. I decide to put it back to sleep so I can go for Mega Drain and I don't have to waste Psychic. A little risky, but we need the power points, it seems. We're at level 41, Alakazam goes for Disable, and Mega Drain is disabled, and we miss with Sleep Powder. Alakazam goes for full HP recover, brilliant play, we put it to sleep. I'm gonna go for Supersonic, it's confused now, so when it wakes up it might hit itself in confusion. It stays asleep, we're disabled no more, we don't get the special drop turn 1. It's still asleep, we don't get the special drop turn 2, and now I have one more I can use. I accidentally click Supersonic. Alakazam, unfortunately, wakes up the next turn. I do get the special drop with Psychic, which is huge, because not only, actually, Alakazam just hit itself in confusion, but not only would its attack do less, but mine are gonna do more. We put it back to sleep so it can't recover, but it wakes up immediately. One more Mega Drain will knock it out, but it hits itself in confusion, and we actually still haven't been attacked. I go for Sleep Powder on Charizard. We do hit, but it wakes up immediately. We put it to sleep again. This time it stays asleep. Psychic 1, it's going to be a 4 KO. Psychic 2, it stays asleep. Psychic 3, and Psychic 4, with 120 out of 120 HP, Butterfree swept through Rival Fievel's team without taking damage. What a dramatic range of outcomes. Losing to not taking a hit point of damage. We will have to heal in order to gain our power points back, but Giovanni nor this rocket should be too difficult. If only we got like Bug Buzz, that would make things like Drowsy so much easier. And speaking of Drowsy, I am a little worried here. Oh, it confused us. We actually might lose. Uh-oh, wait a minute. We're at nine HP. Okay, we put it to sleep. Mega Drain. The next Pokemon is Marowak, so we should be fine. Oh my god, we almost lost, and I didn't save. We almost lost to Drowsy. So, this is a good time as we battle Giovanni 2 to talk about the fact that the next two gym leaders are not going to be easy. As we can see, Sabrina's Psychic Pokemon are going to wall me, and Blaine's Fire Pokemon are... Well, they're not going to wall me, but they're going to one-shot me with Fire Blast. At least our canine will. So... Even though I gain all my HP back using Mega Drain against Rhyhorn, we don't have a gym full of Rhyhorns. We have a gym full of not even Drowsies, like Alakazam. So that's not going to be good. What gym am I going to take on first? What impossible challenge will Butterfree try to overcome? If you guess Sabrina, I don't know if you're right. We don't know if we're going to win. Leads off with Kadabra. We're going to put it to sleep with Sleep Powder. Thankfully, that happens. We get a special drop, turn one with Psychic. And then we get a crit and another special drop. Unfortunately, at this point, Kadabra just won't stay asleep, but at least we're hitting with Sleep Powder. And Psychic, as I predicted, doesn't knock it out. I might need all my HP for what I'm planning. 
So we do knock out Kadabra. That's good. Mr. Mime, we don't put to sleep right away. It goes for double slap. We do on the second turn and we get a special drop again early. That's going to help us with power points, but don't worry. I don't think power points are going to be a huge issue here because now that Venomoth is out, we're going to put it to sleep. We're going to use Mimic and we're going to Mimic Leech Life. We can, well, two shot Venomoth with Psychic and against Alakazam, I'm going to use Leech Life. I don't know if it's going to work. It goes for Psy Wave. We miss, but then it goes for a full HP recover. We've seen a lot of them and we put it to sleep. It wakes up immediately. We use Leech Life. It's going to be a three or four KO. It goes for recover. That's fine. We still have plenty of Leech Life. It stays asleep. Leech Life one wakes up. We get a crit. So one more hit knocks it out. Psy Wave. <laughs> we did get to use a bug type move. I always knew Mimic would be a move we would use on Butterfree, but the idea to Mimic Leech Life, it just kind of came to me and it seemed like such a perfect strategy. And I think it worked really, really well. Now, maybe Double Edge would have done better. I mean, Double Edge, it's 100 base power, but then you got to worry about recoil. We would have had to have gone out of our way. I don't know. We would have deleted it for Mimic eventually anyway. I think Mimic's going to be super helpful. It actually won't be all that helpful versus Blaine, to be honest with you. But going forward, I'm really looking forward to using Mimic because I do have some ideas of where it can be super useful. Anyway, like I said, it's not going to be that useful versus Blaine, but it will be a little useful. Now, I do mess up, I'm going to warn you, but what I planned on doing is using Sleep Powder. Well, actually, we miss. Then we're going to hit with Sleep Powder, and we're going to Mimic Agility. Now, I forget that I need Blaine's badge to boost my special, so I don't need to set up three Agility. I literally just want to use one to outspeed our canine, but whatever. We're able to put Ponyta to sleep, and we knock it out with two Psychics. We do outspeed Rapidash, obviously, three agilities. Psychic's going to be a three KO, so we have to put it back to sleep. Blaine uses Super Potion. We get a special drop, so it's actually only going to be a two KO. Love the special drops. Here's our canine. We put it to sleep turn one. That's huge. Psychic, we get a special drop. Now we're good. It wakes up. That's okay. It's going to be a three hit KO due to the special drop. The special drop, super overpowered. That's why they changed it to 10% in later generations. Also with special being both offensive and defensive, Psychic is one of the most overpowered moves of all time in my opinion. Well, maybe not in Gen 9. Gen 9 is pretty broken. But now we're ready to face Giovanni. There are some trainers here I can battle to gain some more experience points, but I don't know how many of them I want to battle. I actually only battled this first trainer by accident, but I think some extra levels will serve me well for the Elite Four. We do want to outspeed as many Pokemon as we possibly can, because when in doubt, Sleep Powder is useful, but it is infinitely more useful when we outspeed. Because as you see, when we outspeed, we can just perpetually put the Pokemon to sleep. When we don't outspeed, they have a turn to wake up and then attack. I have to basically anticipate them waking up, which is just not something that's easy to do. So like Wrap and Bind, it's a cheap strategy that requires us to go first. Giovanni, however, does not require any sort of cheap strategy. We're going to use Mega Drain on Rhyhorn, knock it out. Doug Trio, I'm going to go for, oh no. Okay, well we missed because of that stupid sand attack. Guard spec. All right, Mega Drain, we knock it out. That's good. Nido Queen, I'm going to go for Psychic. Crit, that's nice. Nido King, that's ah, a 2 KO. I expected that. We don't miss yet, so that's good. We're at level 48, and we miss. Horn Drill's fine. All right, I actually don't think Rhyhorn could have done anything to me. So, Doug Trio turned out to be mildly irritating, and now it's time to battle Rival 6. Now, I probably should use all my rare candies here like I have in some recent runs because, I mean, delaying it to Laura Lee is it really necessary and we're going to definitely need it for her ice Pokemon. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense just to wait. So, you know, that's exactly what I did. He leads with Pidgeot. We go for Sleep Powder. Pidgeot falls asleep and we're going to Mimic Agility. We're going to use one just in case we need to outspeed anything, but we're going to level up at some point in this battle. Thankfully, Pidgeot is going to stay asleep and we knock it out. We're still at full HP. We're going to use Mega Drain on Rhyhorn. That's two down. We're going to put Execute to sleep. Unfortunately, we miss and it hits with Poison Powder. This is the second time that's happened. 
We miss again. This time it goes for Leech Seed. And I'm actually going to reset. Now, let's try and battle Rival 6 again. The only reason we don't want to level up, by the way, is we might be able to get one additional level if... Oh, well, <laughs> that was a bad attempt. But sorry, let me just look at how many experience points we have left. Okay, so we have about 4,000. That means hopefully we level up before Gyarados. We're going to put Pidgeot to sleep. We're going to use Psychic. And then we're going to Mimic Agility because we don't want to use it. Pidgeot wakes up. That's fine. We knock it out. Rhyhorn, knock it out with Mega Drain. Please put Execute to sleep. Very good. Psychic, special drop. Very good. Critical hit. All right, I can use Mega Drain. Saves me a PowerPoint to Psychic. All right, so we're going to put Gyarados to sleep. We're going to use Psychic. Oh, we didn't level up. That sucks. That really sucks. Because now that means we level up before Alakazam. And so that means we couldn't have gotten any boost. But we could have used Agility just to outspeed it. It's going to go for Psybeam. We get critted, which is terrible. But we do put it to sleep. Agility. Agility. Okay, we already outsped after one Agility. It wakes up. We go for Sleep Powder. It's still asleep. Psychic. Special Drop. Very good. And now I got to go for Mega Drain. Get a little bit of HP back. It wakes up, that's fine. We have 79 HP for Charizard. We try to put it to sleep, we're successful. Psychic, special drop, we win. It doesn't matter. It's gonna two-shot. Let's go! Wow, we didn't have to use rare candies. Aw, oh, an encounter, I hate when that happens. We didn't have to use rare candies in order to beat Rival 6. That's incredible because that means I can battle a couple wild Pokemon in Victory Road in order to probably get one more, yeah, 1,600 experience points, we could just battle like a Golbat and an Onix or something, and we can level up one more time before we use the rare candies before Loralee. Now, I don't even know who's going to be difficult. I'm a Butterfree. Like, this is probably going to be very tough, but this has been a very, very fun run. I'm going to be honest. I haven't had this much fun doing one of these in a really long time, so I don't really care how the Elite Four goes. Honestly, I'm just happy Butterfree has been a ton better than I thought it would be. All right, so Laura Lee leads with Dugong. We miss with Sleep Powder. Aurora Beam hits. We lose a little bit of attack, which is fine. We don't have any attacking moves. We do put it to sleep. That's good. It stays asleep. We use Mega Drain. And we're going to gain all... Well, actually, it's going to take a few more Mega Drains. But we're going to gain all our HP back. We put Cloyster to sleep. Of course, it wakes up right away. We put it to sleep again. Mega Drain's going to be a 2 hit KO. And now we can mimic Amnesia and we should be able to sweep through the rest of Loralee's team. Don't want Slowbro to use Amnesia, so I'm just going to put it to sleep. It's going to be a 2 KO because it used one, now two Amnesias. And now Jinx, Mega Drain, okay. So it's going to be a 2 KO. I wonder if Psychic would knock it out. Ah, critical hit. That's okay. Another critical hit. That sucks. <laughs> All right, that's really funny. Um, you can't unfreeze in Generation 1. That was pretty much, other than Lapras getting a hit with Blizzard, assuming Mega Drain doesn't want to KO, that was the only way I could possibly lose that battle at that point. Uh, if we first try somehow, and that's the one we lose... <laughs> Alright, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, we put Dugong to sleep, it wakes up turn 1. We put it to sleep, this time it stays asleep. We go for Psychic, and then two Mega Drains knocks it out. Pretty good. Cloyster, put it to sleep, turn one. Mega Drain, crit's fine. Super Potion, ah, we don't knock it out in two. That's okay, we can use two Psychic, knock it out. We can put Slowro to sleep, don't want it to use Amnesia. Now we can mimic Amnesia, use one, use two, use three. It woke up, that's okay. We knock it out. Now Jinx, we're gonna go for Sleep Powder, not make that mistake again. Psychic doesn't one-shot, by the way, just in case you're curious. And now we can just use Mega Drain, ah, crit. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Almost happened again. Almost happened again. All right. Well, Bruno shouldn't be too bad because even though in theory Onyx should be a tough matchup for Butterfree, it's not. Here, let's see how difficult this is. Actually, I'm going to do something really funny. I mean, you know this battle isn't going to be the victory one, so I can waste a little bit of time. I can mimic Harden and use six Hardens. So now, even if Bruno somehow attacks me, actually I only used five because it woke up, but... Now the Pokemon will do, like, zero damage. So, I'm pretty happy. Also, look how efficient we are when we use our Elixir before Agatha. All our power points are pretty much exactly at zero. 
perfect PowerPoint efficiency. Anyway, Agatha might be difficult. The key thing here is outspeeding. We're gonna have to put our ghost to sleep. They're not gonna be one shots. Their special is very high, but I do have somewhat decent hopes. Not high hopes, but decent hopes. Okay, Gengar, we outspeed. Very good, we put it to sleep. Psychic, ooh, a crit, nice. Now, I don't think Golbat is gonna be a one KO, but I'm gonna try anyway. Ooh, very close. Uh, hopefully it doesn't use haze. No, use Confuse Ray, that's worse. Um, I'm gonna go for Psychic, knock it out. Uh-oh, all right, we level up. Ooh, we're confused no more. That's good, but we didn't one-shot Haunter. Thankfully, Retroactive Super Potion. Okay, I'm playing this so risky. I'm gonna knock out Arbok. That one I correctly predicted would not require two hits. And now I don't really care about this Gengar. Dream Eater's fine and Toxic is fine. That Gengar, the only thing that's really, really bad is Confuse Ray. But it's being a really, really bad, I mean, Lance is probably gonna be bad. I mean, we don't have any sort of good AI shenanigans. They're not gonna just go for agility or barrier. We don't have an ice move. Yeah, I think I think this is probably where we're gonna lose, if not to the champion. But this was a really, really solid first run with a pretty weak Pokemon. I'm actually really happy with Butterfree right now. Okay, so Lance leads with Gyarados. Obviously, we're gonna put it to sleep. We miss. Dragon Rage is fine. Second turn, we put it to sleep. It stays asleep. I go for Psychic. Don't get the special drop. It stays asleep. Go for Psychic again. Don't get the special drop. It stays asleep. Go for it a third time. I do get the special drop. And I probably should have used Mega Drain, but I'm just going to knock it out with Psychic. Dragonair, we're also going to put it to sleep, but I'm going to mimic Agility. So we outspeed Aerodactyl and our special will be a little bit higher. Thankfully, it stays asleep as I set up all three Agilities. I go for Psychic. We get a critical hit, so I don't know how much it would have done otherwise. Let's see. Actually, let's just go for Mega Drain. Dragonair wakes up. Let's put it back to sleep. And okay, so it deals like what? 85% damage? We can knock it out with Mega Drain, and we're at 153 HP. It's not bad. Dragonair number two. I'm just going to go for Psychic. I didn't care if it went for Hyper Beam. I can go for Mega Drain. Hyper Potion. Honestly, this is fine. It has to recharge. It goes for Agility, and I can knock it out with Psychic. A little, a little risky, but I don't want to keep using Sleep Powder if I don't have to. So we level up. So our special is not going to be higher for Aerodactyl, but our speed is still high. We outspeed. We put it to Sleep. I go for Psychic. It stays asleep. I go for Psychic again. And hopefully we have enough for Dragonite because Mega Drain is double resisted. We put Dragonite to sleep. I go for Psychic. Oh, there we go. Special fell. It's going to be a 3 KO. We won. We won. Guys, we won. We made it to the champion on our, well, our first real attempt. This is unbelievable. Like, legitimately, I can't believe Butterfree has done this well. This is incredible. This is surely where we're going to lose. But like... Go Butterfree! I used to love using this Pokemon as a kid, and who knew it was this good at soloing this game? Okay, Pidgeot, we're gonna put it to sleep. It stays asleep. Very good. All right, so we're gonna go for Psychic. No special drop, stays asleep. Go for Psychic again. We get the special drop. It stays asleep. I'm gonna go for Mega Drain just to conserve some power points. Unfortunately, that gives the champion an opportunity to use a full restore, which I don't know why I thought was a Hyper Potion, so Pidgeot is awake. I realize it after I click Psychic, and I'm just so angry right now. But it's okay. It's okay. Hence, that's why that pause was there. I'm so pissed that I didn't realize it's awake now. So we used up a lot more power points than I'd like, and our health is far lower than I'd like. Perfect. Just perfect. Okay. Alakazam, I'm very worried about. It goes for Psybeam. We don't get confused. We put it to sleep. All right. So, we only have, like, six Psychics left. Now five. I have an idea. This is a terrible idea. But what if I mimic Psychic? Double Psychic all the way. <laughs> because of the special drops, it's Psybeam does nothing. I'm going to go for Mega Drain. <laughs> if this works, this is the best. I'm going to try. No, we don't have to put right on to sleep. Yes, critical hit. We're at full HP. We're at full HP. I can't believe it. Okay. Executor, we're going to need all those psychics. Sleep powder stays asleep. We're going to go for one psychic. Crit and special drop. Another psychic. Special drop. 
Another psychic? Special drop? <laughs> Another psychic? Special drop? <laughs> I can't believe it! Alright, we're using the second psychic now. We have eight left. We put Gyarados to sleep. It stays asleep. Psychic, no special drop. Another psychic. Special drop and it stays asleep. Mega Drain, we're at full HP. And we have five left for Charizard. Don't think that crit mattered. We put it to sleep. It stays asleep. One psychic. Oh my god, yes! Yeah, oh, full restore. Wait, wait. No! No, I click psychic! No fire blast! Yes! We, we, <laughs> we still won! <laughs> Go Butterfree! Double Psychic! This is the greatest thing! This is so good! This is so dumb! I'm so happy right now! Butterfree was so good! And level 64! <laughs> that completion time is so perfect! Um, alright, uh, <laughs> I'm losing it. Okay, uh, yeah, Butterfree is good. Now, when I say good, it's not going to be in the... I haven't even decided whether it's the A or B tier. The second tier after Mewtwo. It's going to be in that third tier. But that means it's going to be in the same tier as Pinsir and Dragonite. However, it is not going to be the strongest bug Pokemon. It is, I think, going to be behind both Pinsir and Hitmonlee. Just in terms of consistency, there was a lot of luck involved. I mean, honestly, there's a bit of an argument to be made for Flareon because it's times a little better, but when you can first try the Elite Four, you get a tiebreaker. So, that means it's going to be in the B tier, very good ranking, 24th overall among fully evolved Pokemon, very, very good. Honestly, if you would have asked me what the better bug Pokemon is in Generation 1, I would have told you Beedrill. Of course, Brock plays a big role in that, but the fact Butterfree is better than Charizard, I mean, that's pretty incredible. So, that's all I gotta say. I'll be back tomorrow with another new video. Take care.